I'm going to let the panel um, choose whether they'd like to contribute. So we start with Cyrus. If you don't want to contribute, uh, please please work your way through the panel. Um, <coughs> no, briefly, uh, excellent points. You know, very important points. Um, I, uh, I think many of us as converts go through similar experiences, uh, things we struggle with, uh, the Hadith about uh, Caliph is staying with Quraysh was something that bothered me for a bit, and I'm, I'm not a, a scholar of Hadith, and so I'd certainly love to learn more about it. Um, even actually when I was taught about Uthman Dan Folio's Caliph that I had heard, oh, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, <coughs> I should be mentioning it, that he had also traced his ancestry to Quraysh uh, by some link, and so this was how that was... By the houses, but this is a yeah, so, but, but broadly, more broadly, of course, this is a, this is a, uh, a concern for, for many, uh, more than just ourselves, so... Uh, I just want to thank you for, for, for coming prepared and for uh, raising these points, but I'll, I'll defer to the panel to answer them. Thank you, Brother. Um, I think my presentation was trying to say that the things we think are sacred is not so much sacred, and there is a lot of questions that need to be answered and looked at, and that's why looking at our history makes us understand what are we talking about. We have Haggis as Muslims, we don't have a real history. We have a romanticized Yeah, romantic, that's it. Propagandized. Quite golden age history. And Thakr has a lot in there that needs to be reconsidered and critiqued. Whether it's, it's about black people or women. Um, so the, the, the idea of Quraysh actually was to counter-argue the Shia. So in Thakr, when, when the Shia said Ahlul Bayt, they said no, it's actually being Qurayshi. To, to kind of divert... The, but therefore we have a very... Our, our theology is actually more, is, is, if that's the word, is kizumic, <laughs> uh, dialect, that's it, the dialectical discussion between the Shia, the Mutazimites, the Ashari, about what justifies to be a leader, the concept of imama, and to be able to understand these early discussions based on these things, it's possible, I think, to move away from it and be rooted more in the kind of Quran tradition, not to feel, and this is this is the tricky part, and especially now, to feel boxed into already existing boxes of whether you're a Sunni, or whether you're a Shia, or whether you're an Arab, or whatever it is. And, and this is very, very difficult because they're constantly questioning you, you know, then what are you, you know, if you're not, and somehow if you're not one of them, as if this is what the Prophet came with, you know. Anything, but um, just on two points I want to make very briefly. Thank you for that question, uh, comment because I think it illustrates some of the difficulties um, with a problem that you raise as well. Um, you very rightly point out that we don't need to have, we shouldn't have a romantic history, and I agree with you, and I think that's one of the things I would argue. But unfortunately, most of the propositions that you made were based on an underlying romanticism about what Islam or Muslims are, is. Yeah? And that's the kind of thing that I'm actually trying to move away from. When I said to, you know, started off by saying only God can be objective, I wasn't joking. So why would we expect Muslims to not be human, not to make mistakes? If that was the case, there'd be no point. Um, so we talk about social justice, but no one said justice should be given to you on a plate. Justice is about struggling for it. It's not because it already exists. And therefore, to point out you do in, in ways becomes this kind of rhetorical exercise that what I mean by rhetorical is that it's about persuading people. And I would say to you that some of the ways of persuading them, I mean for example, no one in their right mind, I would argue, would accept the leadership of Saudi Arabia over anything, except Western governments who keep on kind of telling us that Riyadh is our leader. Um, but the point here is this many of the things <coughs> you talked about, for example, you talked about African colonialism or Africa being colonized. I mean, the extraordinary thing about that, like I said to you in the world making, is that, well, Africa didn't exist. And what I mean, in Africa is not a category that we simply say that we have time as the existing. Yes. And what's going to be, but the point is not just the semantic point, but it's really a fixed point there that we already assume. And this is one of the things about world making that we think that the identities and structures that we have now are timeless. And we can project backwards, and they have the same meaning. And they have the same significance. And they don't. So we can't read the same world back into time and imagine the same things were happening. So while I would agree with, and I think most people would agree with your sentiments about this, 
it's also a question about understanding why it should be the case. And the sense of disappointment that we have with Muslims is our biggest failure as Muslims. Because we refuse to, we want Muslims to be better than us. And we want the burden of them being better than us to be on them rather than on our own behavior. So in a sense that they're not better than us, that we are them as a sense, shouldn't surprise us. And this is why I disagree with you when you say that uh, Ibn Taymiyyah is sacred. Well, no, he's not. He's a scholar. God is no, sacred. No, no, no. I'm not saying he's sacred. But I'm saying it's the perception. But the perception is these people unquestionable. Yeah, but the perception is some kind of perception. You can't. Perception is to be struggled. You will always have perceptions because we are humans. And you have to have, this is why you need to have some way of having, um, this is what politics is about, is resolving different kinds of perceptions. And there's no way around that. If there was, we would be angels and there would actually be no need for the caliphate or anything, to be honest with you. And we're not. <coughs> Um, yes, I'm sorry. Just that uh, very quickly. First and foremost, on my uh, sincere and deep apologies, Dr. Suleiman. I, I was actually eagerly awaiting the, the, the talk. Uh, my bladder had other plans. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, idea... <laughs> the, the idea. The idea. And actually, to actually reiterate uh, the point about social justice and the romanticised view of the caliphate, and this is why it's so important for us to actually have an objective discussion on the history and actually look at it and discuss um, you know, what it was, how it was, uh, and for who it was. Um, but no, definitely, you know, this, this idea and these narratives of race um, need to be examined much, much more closely uh, within Islamic history. Okay, due to time restraint, I'm going to take... Um,